shipping okay uh, in WordPress so uh, he's a Singaporean as well like me and uh, I met him uh, in Cambodia okay in an event so uh, very interesting I met him in Cambodia and uh, after I talked to him I realized that wow, he, he actually knows a lot and um, I'm also learning some some new tricks uh, in uh, WordPress because I'm not a WordPress expert okay I, I, I'm, I'm more into Shopify but after I hear from him well wow, I really feel that I also want to do in WordPress because of the cheap cost but as I, as I said before guys whatever we share today is additional knowledge if you don't even start the Amazon don't think of what let's try WordPress whatever you will get confused just do Amazon first and then slowly you expand and do more things okay so uh, without further ado uh, let's welcome Melvin uh, Melvin are you around <laughs> oh he's there he's around okay, yeah, I'm around <laughs> yep. But, so I leave the stage to you uh, and guys, thank you so much guys. I made a move first. I'm not feeling very well, okay? Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Melvin, all, all yours. Sorry, um, yeah. Can everyone can hear me? Yes. Oh. Yes. Can hear you. Can, can right? Can. Okay. Right now, so basically, let me go through my slides. You are at the beach now? Uh, I wish I am at the beach now. <laughs> so it's my dream. It's like, yes, always been my dream. Okay, let me on the zoom. All right. Okay. Hi guys, uh, I'm first time using uh, Zoom to do a preview, so do bear with me. At the same time, uh, may I know which country are you guys from? Maybe you just type in the chat so that I'm able to see. Ben, are they able to see? Yes, hmm? yes, you can see. Okay. okay. Let me see the chat. Okay, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Malaysia. Wow, is there any Singaporean here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, great. Okay, wow, mostly from uh, neighboring country. So basically, who am I? Basically, I'm just a regular guy who wants to retire in less than 10 years time. Probably at a beach like this, because I'm not there right now because of the COVID-19, I'm actually at home. Okay, so I've been an entrepreneur since 2014 and also a forex trader since uh, 2009 when I was really, really young. Uh, I'm still very young right now. So, okay. <laughs> Hello? I think something is wrong. Yeah, it's okay. really just when... Hang on, uh, hang on. Okay, uh, okay, now okay. Okay, okay. Uh, can you guys see my screen? No, now we don't see your screen. Okay, hold on. Let me just share it again. Are you guys able to see my screen right now? Now, yes. Okay. All right, great. So just now, where am I? I'm at the... Hold on. Okay. So I'm also an investor in key management of a few businesses related to FMB, business consultancy and cybersecurity. Uh, I have businesses in uh, China mainly also, and also in Cambodia, Singapore. So at the same time, I'm also an e-commerce seller across Amazon, Etsy, Shopify and WooCommerce also. So my experience uh, with uh, these few platforms have given me quite a lot of experience. Amazon, Etsy. Etsy, I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's a new, not really new, it has been in, uh, in the US for a couple of years. So it's more like a customized or personalized kind of uh, 
products that you can sell in uh, SC or you can look for in SC. You take for instance, a uh, water bottle, or uh, I mean, we call it a tumbler. So you can personalize the name and this tumbler and you can just buy. And actually, there are a lot of people doing the second version of job treating. We call it prints on demand. So take for instance a piece of t-shirt like this, I can print my designs, okay, then I sell it on Etsy. The same goes for in Amazon, merch, on, merch by Amazon, a very similar kind of uh, concept. So um, a bit unlike Amazon, you don't need to have too much inventory, so even, you don't even need to have inventory, you print on demand, you can get uh, print on demand for either in the US or in the Europe or Mexico, and you can ship your products directly to your customers. Okay, what you need to do is to have a drop shipping website, be it Shopify, uh, be it WooCommerce or be it on Etsy. Etsy you can get organic traffic. Alright? Okay. So I'm across uh, e-commerce seller because I believe in diversification of your business. Okay. So today's topic that we're going to touch on will be how to use WordPress to start your e-commerce store. Alright? So basically, this is a, these are a few topics highlighted in gold that I'm going to talk about. So what is drop shipping? All right, is drop shipping the business I should venture? Is it saturated already? How much is needed to start a drop shipping website or drop shipping business? So some facts on figures of WordPress, why I chose WooCommerce versus Shopify, and which platform should I use and why? All right, and how to get started on WordPress? So this will be a little bit step by step on what I do basically uh, to find the product, to get a domain, logo, design, uh, install in a few clicks, uh, choose a theme, all right, and set up the rest of the items, okay? Just uh, let me go through with that. So basically, what is drop shipping and how it works? Now for this picture, I'm actually using Overload, which works with Shopify, but it doesn't work with WooCommerce. But this is a very good, uh, illustration of the drop shipping model. So take for instance for step one, okay, the customers place an order, okay, pays you the retail price, for example, two hundred dollars, and then pays through your, uh, of course, your store, and then forward the order to your supplier, which is step two. You forward the order to your supplier, and you pay for the wholesale amount of hundred and fifty dollars. Take for instance, you are selling a projector. All right. Uh, a project or something that you can sell for $200, okay, at the same time your cost that you buy from AliExpress uh, would be about $150, so you keep the $50 in profit, alright. So once you have the details, the drop shipping details, for instance, what are the products that you want to purchase, and also the address, the email, or even the phone number, okay, you can forward it to your supplier. Once you pay your supplier, your supplier will be doing the fulfillment for you right from China. Uh, if you are using AliExpress, so they will directly ship the products from China to US or even to other parts of the world, depending on the supplier. All right, okay. So what I want to stress on over here is that you don't need to have too much inventory or too much intensive capital as compared to many other businesses. I've been venturing to many other businesses many years ago, and drop shipping is one of the least uh, capital to start on. Later, I will talk about why and have a breakdown on what are the costs to get started. All right, okay. So, like just now I've mentioned, we are actually okay considered to be a digital middleman. Okay, if you take a look at this illustration, yes. All right, we are actually a digital middleman. So we don't have any inventory. We just have a, work, a nice, good looking website. We drive traffic to there. All right, and we start doing the business. Okay, so in this case, there are lesser risks involved. Okay, as compared to many other businesses. And when there is a sale, then we start to fulfill that. All right, now dropshipping has existed for decades, many, many years ago. But with the new digital uh, kind of uh, advances, online shopping created a huge demand as shoppers are getting lazier and by shopping online, they are able to save a lot more time trying to find the products that they want. 
Now imagine you can create a Walmart or H&M entirely online or having very little low overhead costs. Take a look at what, what would be the profit margins and how fast can you scale, all right? So what is the beauty of being, of, uh, being able to do job shipping? So buyers pay for the product cost first instead of you paying upfront, little to no risk involved. All right, once one of the fastest ways to get started on a business is to dive in. If you are fast, you can get it started in less than 72 hours or even 48 hours. All right, okay. Very low startup cost, you can get it done in less than $150. Now, your building and assets, uh, basically, you are building your own virtual business that you can sell for good profits, like just now what Nate has mentioned. A uh, good Amazon store, FBA store, can sell. For 2x, 2.5x, or even 3x, depending on your business. All right. But the key thing after doing dropshipping, the next step you should really venture on is to building your own brand and building your own brand with assets that you can leverage on. Assets meaning uh, uh, your customer database. All right. This is a very, very important asset that most uh, venture capitalists would like to use buy into all right and also one setup you only requires about 22 to 4 hours per day for building orders and answering customers queries and optimizing ads campaign now i believe you guys are a lot of you guys are actually amazon sellers, amazon sellers so probably you could scale down to not even two to four hours you can hire a va a virtual assistant in philippines or in probably thailand or in, in fact in vietnam to get to fulfill your orders for you or even if you have uh, there's also automated tools all right that can help you to automate this kind of uh, orders and lastly you don't need to invent products to sell you just need to find the winning product all right so now you ask yourself this question is drop shipping the business i should venture in 2020 now if you are looking for a way to make money without a huge upfront investment and without too much hassle or work, drop shipping with an e-commerce platform is exactly what you should look into. Uh, I've been doing many businesses, I run around, it's very, very tiring trying to get sales, trying to talk to people, trying to close sales. But what drop shipping has changed my life is I can be at home, all right, and anywhere in the world. I just take out a laptop with a good Wi-Fi and then you can start making money from there. All right, and it's a lot simpler, pretty expensive uh, to start to get started. All right, and your business can be run in your spare time, turn into a full-time business if you wish to branch out. Now with drop shipping, you don't have to worry too much money to invest in inventory uh, or dealing with uh, warehouse space or shipping out packages. Your Basically, your supplier will be sh shipping out all the packages for you. All right. So you, what you have to do is simply add products to your online store, place orders with the drop shipper, and then send them directly to your customers. And for the most part of it, probably I would say for drop shipping, a uh, good twenty to thirty percent should be focusing on uh, creating the website. But the rest of the sixty to eighty percent, you should focusing on driving traffic to your store and getting all these customers' database and retarget. Your, uh, your customer base also so obviously like any other business you will have to be ready to deal with any issues occasionally take for instance customers with funds uh, i believe you guys have uh, uh, have actually experience in amazon as well all right so one of the key questions is how much is needed to get started on a job shipping business now, do you believe with as low as $150, you can start a drop shipping business? Now, if you think you can get as low as $100, please type a yes in the chat right now so that I'm able to see. I just want to get a response uh, from you guys instead of uh, just a one way kind of a funnel where I keep talking. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes, yes. All right, great. So let me have that come up. Have you guys seen this cup? Sorry, it's uh, superimposed by the beach. 
So this is an automatic magnetic mark that I purchased from AliExpress. All right. So this mark, I believe in Amazon or even in uh, some other stores, you are uh, able to see. This is quite a winning product, actually. Because everybody stays at home right now. With, uh, with this COVID-19, they couldn't get a cup. They couldn't get a good cup of uh, Starbucks coffee. So with this mark, you can uh, actually automatically stir the coffee or even uh, in, yeah, in Malaysia, you have a Milo, you have Holly, kind of uh, many various drinks, all right? Okay. So for product research, later I'll talk about it and uh, it will be a very, very valuable bomb that I'm giving to you on how to do product research be it on uh, this Amazon or for your job shipping business. Now with a job shipping business, let's get back to this topic. Okay, a hosting and domain will cost an average of ranges from zero to ten dollars a month, depending on how, depending on the hosting provider and also how good uh, you want to get uh, for your hosting. All right. While the domain cost will cost about an average of fifteen dollars per year, so. One of the key things is you need to get a very good logo creation through Fiverr. You can get it for five to twenty dollars, and of course, a cup of Starbucks coffee for me. No, I was just joking. All right, okay. So the total cost per year to get a website done, all right, six dollars per month. So multiply by multiply by twelve months, seventy two dollars a year, or if I show you this value bomb, you can get zero dollar hosting fee. All right, this is a very, very valuable kind of uh, uh, insights for you guys. Infinity3.net, you can get it for free hosting. Of course, there are some limited, uh, there are some limitations to that. Uh, $15 domain and a $15 logo, and that is all you can get started. The rest of the apps that we use in WordPress, uh, WooCommerce, is all free. Okay, most of the tools that I use are all free because, yeah, yes, there is, unlike Shopify, right, there's a lot of uh, costs which I will talk about. Okay. Okay, so some, some facts and figures of Shopify versus WooCommerce. Now, Shopify powers over a million stores worldwide, while WooCommerce is claimed to be the most powerful e commerce platform in the world right now. There are actually 90 million WordPress websites right now uh, operating. Big brands are all mainly using WooCommerce and uh, WordPress to get started. So Shopify is also a lot more expensive in the long run. Okay, and, way, and, and WooCommerce is way cheaper. Shopify has lesser apps as compared to WooCommerce. Okay, we call it plugins in uh, WooCommerce. And also lesser customization functions compared to WooCommerce. Also lesser free themes. Uh, however, Shopify is a little bit easier to use as compared to WooCommerce. But if you guys are already on Amazon, uh, you are selling. I, I see that Shopify versus WooCommerce, you can learn WooCommerce a lot faster if you are already if you are actually uh, on Amazon. Okay, Shopify has lesser support as compared to WooCommerce too. Right, because of the figures, because of the community that so many people are using WooCommerce, you can easily find any issues or, or any plugins pertaining to WooCommerce. Right? So basically, which platform should I use and why? Okay, so job, job shippers commonly use uh, Shopify and WooCommerce to start their e-commerce store. So it depends on your budget and customization goals in the long run. Now, WooCommerce has tons of amazing teams ready to make for you to load. For Shopify teams basically have very limited free teams and most of them are paid. And the cost uh, about ranging from $80, $150, I've seen like $200, $300 uh, kind of teams. Yeah. So being a business owner, we try to minimize our cost as much as possible. Okay. So my conclusion for me after I have using uh, after I've used Shopify for a few stores uh, and also WooCommerce, I see that Shopify is a little bit more user friendly, okay, for for new users, but way more expensive. Now, it costs about twenty nine dollars per month, 
versus a six dollar, which is five dollar and ninety five cents per month posting. Okay, is and for this five dollar ninety five cents per month, I can create unlimited websites. Okay, so obviously it's a no brainer for me. So I started with Shopify and moved most of my store to WooCommerce. Now currently running one Shopify store, okay, and three stores on WooCommerce. So I'm running one. The Shopify store I'm running is on a print on demand. All right. So selling uh, customizable or personalizable uh, T-shirts, um, tapestry, mugs, uh, pillows, and uh, canvas paintings. All right. So. Okay. When you guys heard of WordPress, so how to get started on WooCommerce is actually WordPress uh, plugin. Okay, there's no coding required. Now this is a myth that most people, even for me when I started, uh, is a myth for me that I thought that hey, WordPress I need to do a lot of coding. I need to learn coding right from the scratch, which will easily take me for a few months to get started. But no, it is so much easier to use right now. All right. Okay, so later I'll, I'll zoom into how you can get started in just a few clicks. But the first key thing, okay, is product research and selection of the niche. Okay, so you must find a niche that you have interest on and zoom into the products that's already producing results. Okay, for example, the home niche, which is one of the top performing, performing niches right now due to the COVID 19. So from there, you can find a winning product using free tools. Okay. Like AliExpress Job, Job Shipping Center, Google Trends, WMS Everywhere, Keyword Research Chrome Extension. So give me, uh, maybe I would like to share, uh, maybe I'll, I would like to know how many of you guys want to use all these free tools. Okay, uh, probably in the chat, just give me some response so, uh, so that I, I see that you guys are still alive. Or maybe I'm too boring. All right, I'll let you use free tools. Same for me also. Okay, great, great, great. All right, so these free tools <coughs> uh, versus paid tools, I, I obviously I've done my own work. Uh, of course, I come up with my own formula of generating free tools. All right, okay, for you guys. Okay, so let's dive into it, this value bomb right now. All right. Okay, so how to find the winning products in AliExpress dropshipping? Of course, first of all, you have to register AliExpress account. Uh, you can just Google AliExpress. Okay, so once you have the AliExpress account, okay, you go to the dropshipping center. Okay, uh, uh, due to the time constraint, I cannot go through with you the step by step. So I will just tell you. How to go and uh, basically how to find the winning products. So once you're at the dropshipping center, click on this five products to sell. Okay, so find the winning product. First of all, you go and search for the high volume of orders uh, and dropshipping orders. DS means dropshipping. So you choose your product, you key in probably uh, some keywords and some categories. And you should be able to see this black box. I mean, I highlighted this black box. You should be able to see the product, the orders, and drop shipping orders. So from here, you can see that there are 300, uh, sorry, 3,164 orders for normal orders, while drop shipping orders, there's 617. So these are data from AliExpress itself. So this data cannot lie. Which, which means that this supplier is selling 3,164 uh, orders while there's drop shipping orders of 600 over. So one of the perfect formula to find is that these are already a winning product. Okay. And the other thing that I want to show you guys is, take for instance, if you have seen an orders, probably many more thousands and the drop shipping orders is less than Hundred, okay, is way less than hundred, or is uh, many times the drop the the orders versus the drop shipping orders ratio is many times more. It means that there is demand for this product. However, there are not many drop shippers. Uh, 
they are, they are actually selling these products. So these are very good indicator that there's huge demands in the market, but not many dropshippers are actually selling online. Okay, so this is one of the key that you 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 take home right now. Yeah, be it for Amazon FBA, you can do some homework on dropshipping centers, or even you want to start a dropshipping store. So this is a, a very nice uh, kind of formula that I follow and most people follow right now. Okay, next. After you have analyzed the data, okay, so you pull out the keywords and let's check on Google Trends. So if you take a look at the laptop stand that just now I've actually uh, did a research on, okay, I spent about five minutes just to do the research like this. So you can see that the interest over time for laptop stand has surged to almost 100 in May. Means that in this COVID 19 crisis, all right, most people are staying home and actually are using laptop, but probably due to uh, due to some space constraint, okay, they will prefer to get a laptop stand. Okay, so this laptop stand, let's see how much we can sell it for. Okay, which is the next step. Okay, we try to key, key in the keywords into Google, okay, and find the Google Shopping ads. And uh, this WMS is a uh, WMS everywhere is a free Chrome extension where you can check on uh, search volume of keywords. Okay, so from here you take a look at this uh, black box. The first two, you can see that people are selling about hundred and eight dollars, okay, uh, US dollars, and about ninety to ninety dollars. Okay, for this laptop stand, which is a very similar laptop stand, all right. And the search volume, okay, in the US, okay, is about twenty-seven thousand. So means that there are so many people trying to buy, but okay, the demand, but not not much uh, people are actually selling it. So let's take a look over here. So you can see from here we are selling. I mean, you can buy it for twenty dollars. Probably include shipping. Let's give it to. $30 and you can easily sell it for $90. So you keep the $60, $50 to $60 in your pocket. Okay. So if you are doing some advertisements, probably you just minus about $10 to $20 from there. Okay. And you still easily can keep the $20 in your pocket for each product. So, okay. So, take for instance, if I'm able to sell just three products, three laptop stands per day, that's $60 in your pocket. After netting off whatever cost, uh, advertising cost and other related costs. Okay. So now we move on to how to start the website. So basically you need to register a domain and hosting. So for this, I strongly recommend uh, SiteGround. Okay. Why? It's because SiteGround has been one of the best support that I've uh, encountered. I've tried like four or five many others. Uh, some of them I uh, tried to install some plugins and it crashed two, two of the website because their hosting uh, is too slow. Okay, you just, just keep crashing, giving me tons of error. The SSL has tons of problems, but so far for SiteGround, there's no problem. Okay, so normally I just get the $5.95 package, which I can create unlimited websites, okay, for free. Okay, it's just $2 difference from the first. From the first one, okay. So of course, of course, for me, I can create once I find a one winning product. Next, I scale it. Next, I can find easily find the second winning product and create another website. Just plug and play, okay. So once you register a domain, which is a one-time cost, okay, of uh, fifteen to sixteen dollars about there, depending on uh, your the, the kind of uh, domain that you are searching for. So, for example, if you're intending to sell some kitchen related products, then you should have some, then you should have a name, something like a kitchen lee or kitchen or so. Yeah, and next is to outsource your logo design. Okay, you can create this logo for just five or ten dollars. Fiverr. So, look for good reviews of the seller and also choose. It's very important to choose a logo that's related to your niche. Okay, most sellers 
on uh, Fiverr will actually design the logo based on your niche or you have to tell uh, him what you really want okay if not I've tried uh, some of the sellers they will just give you a random logo that, that totally does not resonate with your your niche or your product store okay so now we can start to install the WordPress and WooCommerce so let me just give you a guide a uh, little bit step by step here just to show you guys what to have a feel of the potential on how easy you can start the e-commerce store okay so we start a new website you just choose uh, wordpress plus woocommerce all right and after that uh, we'll, we'll ask you to create a login and password on this page okay next Okay, sorry. So we let sorry. So my computer is a bit low. Okay, so next you log into your access panel with uh, your login credentials, okay, that you have set in in this website, okay. So now you can easily jump start your site with really made plugins and design. Okay, you just click the start now button. Next, you can choose from hundreds of really made templates for you. Okay, if you if you are yeah, if you are reach this this kind of page, right? You can spend so much time trying to it's like you're you are shopping for a team, and these teams are actually free. Most of them are free, actually hundreds. Most of them are free unless you purchase on other sites. Alright. And you can get a few hundred easily made templates ready for you. Just click uh, a few buttons and you can get it installed you know, into your e-commerce store. Okay, so the next is to install a recommended page builder, which we call it uh, element store. Okay, and also this WooCommerce, which is the e-commerce plugin for WordPress. Okay. So of course, in my another class, I use another kind of uh, page builder. I call it Teamify. It's more for the one product page, uh, one product landing page, uh, where I convert a lot better than using just a normal website, a normal uh, page builder. Okay. Add these three plugins. Okay. Click, 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 and just add. So each of them have different functions. Okay, these are more plugins for free also. Yes, I like free, optimized for SEO, Google Analytics. Okay. And next, once you have uh, add, added all those free plugins, and you just click install, complete. Okay, you wait a few minutes. Then, the website design will be important. You will look something like this. Very nicely done for you. Alright. Okay. So, from here, the next key thing is you need to set up your payment gateway and WooCommerce. So I would like to stress that uh, for this, uh, Stripe does not support dropshipping. Okay, I've tried a few times uh, for various stores, uh, they don't allow dropshipping. So the only way is to use PayPal right now. Okay, so once you set up PayPal, you key in from general, uh, you key in all these details in your WooCommerce plugin. Okay. From general product shipping, payments, account privacy, emails, integration. Once you get it, if you, if you are, yeah, if you're actually doing it on uh, Amazon, it's like super easy for you. Okay. And also register with Suzy to import products to your store. Okay. So once you register, let's take a look at this uh, laptop stand again. Okay. You just, you can just easily click on this uh, e icon. Which is located at the top right hand corner of your AliExpress page. All right. Of course, you have to install the Chrome extension first. Okay. So once you click this, what will happen? Okay. Actually, I missed this step. So what will happen? It will import this, the product into your Isuzu, and from Isuzu, right, you can click another button to import to your selected store with all the images, all the description all imported in just one click this is a very very uh, kind of a fast uh, 
automated tools that I use. Okay, so easily you can uh, create a store in less than actually one, one day if you are fast. All right. So next is of course to import reviews from AliExpress. Also, the product is a very nice product, but you need a lot of reviews. All right, to get some to get a better conversions like Amazon. Now Amazon reviews are. Uh, of course, it's a lot difficult, a lot more difficult, and a lot, a lot more steps to, to do. But with this uh, for, work, for WordPress, right, you can just get these automated tools, uh, review also for free. You can import up to 20 for products for free. Easily import four or five stars you can choose. Okay, you, you can even edit the reviews. All right. So, lastly, you need to optimize your listings okay, and your website. Contact us. Okay, it's very important if you were to start selling on Google Shopping, uh, Google Shopping, uh, Facebook ads, or even on Pinterest. So these are the things that will get you approved on those uh, advertising platforms. Contact us. FAQs, terms and conditions, returns and exchange policies, privacy policy, product page, of course, your home page, and also any plugins that will helps conversion and a lot of automated tools in, in this plugin are also free. All right. So basically, with this uh, short span of time, I couldn't uh, explain too much things also. Uh, if I wish, I can go through probably half a day or even a full day to teach you guys, but I'm, 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 I'm unable to. So with such a short span of time, I believe you can see the dropshipping uh, potential as a business in 2020. And as a business owner, if you are looking for additional income, all right, especially in these uncertain times, you should really take a look at the dropshipping. All right. Okay. A successful businessman should have at least five streams of income before being able to retire. I'm working on that. All right. Okay. So hope that you guys will enjoy uh, what I have shared. All right. So yes, yeah. So that's the end of my presentation. Also, I'm open up to all the FAQs and uh, questions and answers. Yep. All right, let's thank Melvin for his wonderful presentation. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the question answers uh, section. Okay. Um, Melvin, do you see the Q&A section or do you want me to? Yes, yes, yes. I'm okay. able to see. Okay. Yeah. So what do I do? I answer live, is it? I have you to click already. Yeah. So okay. when I so when I click, then they will be able to see a question, and then you can just uh, like type in, uh, type yeah. in, and also oh, uh, ju yeah, just under live, but it's okay. Okay, so is this Amazon FBA? Uh, is Amazon FBA can be considered a dropshipping business? No, my answer is no. It's not considered. Not considered. Okay, so next question. Okay, so could you give us a reference page builder, team builder, and plugin usually used in WordPress? Yeah, sure. Okay, for this, it depends on if you are using WooCommerce or. Uh, sorry, Ben, do I need to type in? Oh, no, you don't have to. You don't have to. Just answer, answer it live, can read. Oh, okay, sure. Okay, so normally I use Astra, A S T R A, and Elementor Pro uh, to create. But recently I have actually used Teamify, T H E M I F Y. They are able to create wonderful website like those uh, Apple Store kind of website where you have parallax scrolling, a lot of multi functions. Uh, that you can use you can go and check it out T H E M I F Y. All right. So plugins that I use or there's tons of plugins, at least 20 if I were to talk about it. In fact, actually in this presentation, if there's uh, not much time restriction, I could actually easily show you 20 plugins that I use, at least 20. All right. To make your, your store like a branded store, like you have already have many sales, many reviews, and uh, tons of it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So next question is, uh, how does it work when it comes to refunds for dropshipping? 
where does the buyer return the item? All right, this is a very, very good question. So in your returns and exchange policy, you can actually you can actually key in the address that you want them to return your items to. Take for instance, if it's in Singapore, Malaysia, you can key in uh, or another way is to talk to your AliExpress uh, supplier, okay? Get their address and you can and the sellers, oh, sorry, actually the buyers can actually ship the products directly to uh, to this uh, your supplier. But you have to talk to your supplier first. Yeah. So when there's a refund, there are two ways lah, basically. So one is ship directly back to the supplier to get a refund. Second, ship directly back to you first. Alright, of course it will take about two weeks to get it done. Alright. So Normally, it depends on the pricing, uh, the products that you are trying to sell. If you are trying to sell some very cheap items, normally, uh, anything below, I would say 20, 30 bucks, I will normally not ask them to return the item or just return for free. If anything, uh, more than 30 bucks or 20 bucks, I will ask them to ship back to the supplier. Yeah. Or even back to, uh, the address that I have, that I have like. or the third way if your volume is big enough you can work with a fulfillment center in the US all right to help you to do the the, uh, the returning of the item that's when probably phase two or phase three when your product is your know, product orders are very huge okay yeah so the next question is uh, when we search using Google should we change the country to where we want to sell because I see your product example in is uh, SG results. Yes, of course. Yeah, you should definitely change uh, the products. Okay, because I'm just using an illustration. Of course, if you are trying to sell in the US, okay, you have to change the country to uh, US. Like just now in the WMS everywhere, on the on the right part of the screen, there's a US flag. So there's the data from US. Actually, you can select many other countries. Okay. And also for Google Shopping, right? Google, Google Shopping, you can you can actually try to use Waze, right? To actually show up in the US. Uh, but that one, uh, there's a separate, there's a little bit more tedious process. Okay. You have to use VPN and other tools to make it done. Okay. Okay. Okay, some team, the yeah, next question is some team is very outstanding, but when you install it, it, it only appear website like for first page and the rest look like blog. How do I configure the team? So, wow, this is a bit technical uh, kind of question, and the rest of the page looks the same. Yes, correct. I would say it depends on the team that you are using and also some of the settings. So some of the settings when once you click uh this uh when you try to import all the import all the page design right sometimes you can select so some of the teams right you probably you might you might not select properly so sometimes you only import uh the design but without importing uh, some of the pictures or the descriptions or the the animations we call it yeah. And we also normally for teams, right? We normally look for mobile responsive because for e-commerce store, at least ninety-five percent or even ninety-eight percent, based on the data, uh, of the sales are actually generated on mobile phones. So we need to look for very mobile responsive uh, teams and websites. Okay. Okay, from Ricky. So. Now, when do you recommend you are using Bluehost as web hosting? Uh, it really depends on you. Bluehost uh, is also good enough, okay, but I prefer to use SiteGround. Okay, Bluehost can also be very cheap. Uh, do we need to back up the site in the site frequently in case something happened? Uh, yes. Uh, for Blue, for okay, I'm not sure about Bluehost, but for SiteGround, it gets uh, there's a way to back up. Every single day. That means once you go into the backend system, right, you can click uh, backup daily. Okay. Or there's a WordPress plugin called all in one WordPress. 
where you can back up. You can save the whole copy of the backup, okay? Every day also. Or you can actually use the backup, okay, if something were to happen, okay, to duplicate into another store. All right. So the third question by Ricky is how can you gain traffic to a website and how to do SEO? Wow. This is a, a bit technical question. So for SEO, there are a few plugins to use. We call it, I call it a rank map. Uh, they actually use. Yoast SEO is a little bit out of date. Uh, you will probably for SEO or dropshipping store, we normally don't tend to really dive into it because SEO will take up at least three weeks to get some traction. All right. So how to gain traffic to your store? Okay, this one you have. There are a few ways that I do. Google Shopping. So Google Shopping is something that uh, actually most people it's quite a new, quite a new way instead of uh, Facebook marketing. So Google Shopping is one. Okay. Second, okay, is Facebook marketing, of course. Third, Pinterest. So Pinterest is normally in the US, but actually, <coughs> dropshippers. There are quite a few dropshippers are actually selling on um, Pinterest and generating huge income from there. And I, I get uh, as a uh, clicks are. Uh, uh, sorry, per click as cheap as about 24 cents US dollar. Okay, and now recently they have uh, actually opened up the conversion pixel. So the pixel is like an AI uh, in Pinterest, it's like Facebook pixel. Okay, so now Pinterest also has its, its pixel right now. However, it's only mainly for US countries, UK, uh, neighboring countries like Singapore, Malaysia. They haven't opened up to you uh, to ask right now. In, in fact, almost every alternate days I'm talking to the Pinterest uh, support team. Yeah, to see, to talk to them, to see when can they open up also. Yeah. Okay, so next question is what are the what are the typical challenges that dropshippers face? Wow, nice, of course. Now the key challenges, right? Of course, is to drive traffic. Okay, the key is in, in anything, be it, uh, I think I see Amazon or uh, dropshippers is to drive traffic. I mean, coming from a starting point from, from where you guys have seen. Once you can clear that hurdle of generating good enough traffic, the rest is relatively a small problem. Yeah, it's because for dropshippers, you really don't have too much inventory to worry about. Take for instance, if you were to do a product research and everything that you have done, website and everything uh, you have done, but probably your product is not a winning product. Your risk is only about 100 to 150 or even lesser because most of the plugins that I use are free. Uh, and you can easily change a new domain, use back the same hosting, okay, and create another product. So the typical challenges is still back to probably the winning products and also this uh, traffic generation, right? Okay, so next, uh, Mr. Melvin, can you share your contact? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I'll just type my contact. I prefer to have an email. Type it inside. Okay, so you guys can send me whatever things. Yeah, so for Sarah Ding, uh, maybe can you share some methods that you use to drive traffic to your site? Yeah, uh, talk about Pinterest, uh, Facebook, and also Google Shopping. Yeah, in fact, in fact, Google Keywords AdWords is also a new thing, all right, uh, that people underutilize. The fourth thing, probably for advanced. Uh, Digital marketers, they would use something like a uh, ref content, tabola, and also MGID, Outbrain, and all this. So if you have seen like, if you like to read news or some of the uh, articles, right? So you've seen a, a page whereby there are many articles and below there are many squares. We call it a thumbnail. So these thumbnails, right? Some are actually paid ads, some are actually not. So these paid ads are actually, once you click, right, it will drive you to a landing page Then they will talk about their products and services. So this is one way that you can also drive traffic. 
and you can get uh, very cheap clicks and also bottom me 30 cents. Yeah. Okay, so William uh, Sugato mentioned that can we do drop shipping from AliExpress to Amazon? In the early stages, yes, but now Amazon has very strict policies. Yeah. So um if you you, do, you you wouldn't want to risk your account getting banned because for Amazon right FBA uh the shipping has to be very fast. So for drop shipping, AliExpress drop shipping, uh, sometimes you could take even the faster shipping you could take about one week to two weeks, unless you already have a supplier in the US. Okay. Uh, that means in the AliExpress, you can actually look for supplier already in the United States and ship directly. But I would suggest not to also. Why? It's because um, Amazon has very, really, very, very strict policies. Uh, you wouldn't want to get your account being banned. Yeah. Okay, so Sri mentioned that I didn't hear clearly. What is the payment method that's not recommended? Okay, Stripe. S T R I P E. Probably I just typed it out. Uh, it's not. It's, it's not because it is not. Uh, it's not recommended. It's because they don't allow dropshippers. Yeah, because they will people will have take for instance many refunds, uh, many many chargebacks, and uh, Stripe don't want to don't want to deal with that. But for PayPal, uh. PayPal will actually come in as a middleman to see uh, what is your policies and versus uh, what is the dispute that your customers get. Yeah. Okay. So what approach would you use to identify winning products? Um, actually, I just mentioned just now in my slides. Yeah. So basically three tools easily that I use. Uh, AliExpress dropshipping center, okay, uh, to find the dropshipping orders and also versus the orders to find the good ratio of the demand in the market, okay. After that, I'll go to take a look at uh, Google Shopping, okay, and also the third thing is the uh, keywords, WMS uh, keyword search to search for the volume, okay. Some advanced methods would would be to go to a Facebook ad library to go and search for winning products also. So those ad libraries, right, Facebook, you can easily search for those uh, winning videos that has tons of comments and also likes or shares. So from there, you can see how they are able to do their winning videos and also you can generate some ideas from there. Okay, so next by Fiona, may I know SiteGround server is based in which country? Uh, it depends on which country uh, that you can select. There are a few countries, there are a few servers that, uh, that I use. So far, I'm using Singapore, so it's quite okay. Yeah, so SiteGround has many servers. Uh, they, will, they will do an automation depending on the country. Yeah. So again, which advertising platform do you focus on? Do you focus more on Facebook or Google Shopping ads? Now, let me talk about this. For Google Shopping Ads, right, or even Google AdWords, right, you are able to find, okay, let me, maybe let me dive into a little bit more understanding about Google Shopping or on Facebook. Now, Google Shopping, right, is basically a search intent platform. So basically, when I want to search for a laptop stand, so I go, and I go to Google, I type laptop stand, and it will show up what are the various vendors and what are the various products related to the top stand. Okay. However, for Facebook, right, it's a social media market, uh, social media platform. So what it means is I'm browsing my friends, I'm checking out my friends' uh, stories or feeds, then suddenly this advertise, uh, advertisement came. Then I saw this laptop stand. Okay, although I can although they can target uh, audiences, right, but Basically, on average, right, Google Shopping uh, has a lot more conversions and also cheaper cost per click as compared to Facebook. However, for Google Shopping, right, you cannot scale too fast too much. Why I would say so? Because if the search volume is only that limited, all right, 
but you cannot create a very viral effect on Google Shopping ads, but you can do it on Facebook. So what I mean by viral means that on Facebook, take for instance, if you do a very good video on it and you have excellent comments and excellent likes and excellent share, this one person is going to share to maybe five people. These five people also share to another five people. So you can get organic traffic, uh, traffic slowly from there and it will get a lot more viral. So that's where you can generate more sales from there. And also once you have a lot of data, you can retarget and uh, also customize your lookalike audiences from there too. Okay. Yeah. So when next question is when you do dropshipping, do you sell to US only or worldwide? Uh, if, if, if you do dropshipping, how do you tackle the language barrier? Okay. So for me, when I do my advertisement, right? I only select uh, English speaking audiences. So I don't select all kinds of uh, languages. So one of the languages that I select is only English speaking. Okay. So at least I will, I will actually uh, remove the language barrier kind of uh, issues. All right. <coughs> Sorry, let me just have a drink. Okay, so Melvin, while you're having your drink, I see that there are a lot, a lot of questions that <laughs> coming in, that's coming in for you. Um, <laughs> of course, we have a, a, a limited time and um, maybe you can choose some of the questions that uh, you feel that can add more value. And if the questions are repeated, maybe we can just dismiss them. Okay, yeah. okay, sure, sure. Yeah, it's constantly at twenty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, I can write the plugins here. I, I have no time to write. There's at least twenty of them. Yeah. So, uh, been mentioned. How do you drive external traffic for customers visiting? You know, I think I have to talk about it. Uh, okay, let me just go through. Okay, so there's an anonymous attendee. So how do you ask your supplier to dropship for you? Can you provide online of sequence? Okay, basically, once uh, this customer purchased the product from you, right? So I can see the question anymore. Uh, it keeps bumping up. Okay, never mind. So basically, okay, how do you ask your supplier to dropship for you? You actually no need to ask. So what you what, what you need to do right is um, basically you just go to AliExpress and purchase the product and ship the address directly to your customer. So once you get your customer so-called a shipping address, just copy and paste and you can just start the drop shipping from there. So only probably only after you have huge orders, then you talk to your trusted supplier. Because one product, right, you can have five to ten suppliers. Of course, for me, for a start, I look for the cheaper, uh, cheaper cost and also the higher rating. Okay, uh, each supplier on other express they have a rating. Probably get at least four point five and above, uh, kind of rating. Yeah. So, yeah. is it okay to dropship my own products that I I already selling on Amazon? Of course, if you are you are if you are already selling and have success on Amazon, you can easily just copy and paste the listing, the description and put it into your own store. Now your own store, once you do the sales, once you, once you generate traffic, your leads are 100% yours. It's your assets. So the more you drive, the more the data you have and the more valuable your company or your business will become. Versus for, uh, versus Amazon. Yeah, okay, basically on Amazon, right? You, you probably can't get the database. Uh, you can you cannot retarget them and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, so next question is by Yu Wong. I heard a lot of message saying image ads doesn't work anymore on dropshipping. When we do dropshipping, does every ad need to be video ads? Of course. Um, I would say not. Normally what we do is uh, you need to have a few, three, Three different ad sets, or at least two. One is on video, and probably the other one is on the image uh, ads. But image, uh, I would say, 
if you want to spend the same twenty dollars, right? To do, I mean, twenty dollars or ten dollars per day or advertisement, try to do your best. So my best is normally I will only focus on uh, video ads where I generate a, a very good video that resonate with the with the with the buyers. So that you can have a purchase intent on the buyer itself, especially if you are doing on Facebook ads. Okay. But if you are just doing on Google Shopping, uh, just uh, image ads will be fine. Yeah. But also the image ads for the first picture, the main image, you have to do something different. Okay, because for drop shipping, you will see, let's say if someone will type in the same product and you see the same listing, probably five, five of the same image uh, from generated from the from the supplier, the buyer of course will just take a look at the cheapest and they will not look at your uh, same listing. So your main image has to be very different, right? A little bit more different. Okay, so next question. Wow, hold on. Huh? How much do you have to spend to drive traffic to your site to increase awareness? Basically, you can spend from $5 per day to five hundred dollars per day, depending on how and how fast you want to scale and how big uh, is your your profit margins. So a graph guideline for this right is once you find a winning product, your margins have to be at least twenty dollars to thirty dollars on top of your cost. So if I were to find if I have a product that is selling for twenty bucks, easily I have to sell about fifty bucks or forty nine dollars because my advertisement. Normally, to take out about ten to twenty dollars of each product. Okay. Mm, okay. Next, uh, I have an existing normal landing page. I don't know if it's possible to change my current website to an e-commerce. How do I change it? Okay, for Suzanne, uh, I need to know which provider are you using. I mean, there are many different uh, kind of website you can you are you are there's click panels, there's Wix, there's WordPress, there's Shopify. So I, I really need to know uh, basically what uh, website are you actually what sorry provider website provider are you actually using on. Yeah. So from there then we can see how it changes. So what market and country you would recommend to start this drop shipping business? Normally five top five Top five countries like Australia, Canada, Australia, Canada, US, UK, uh, probably New Zealand, or probably something Germany. Yeah, Germany also need a target for English uh, speaking uh, people also, or some 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 other European countries, Switzerland, Sweden. Yeah, just target this top five English speaking countries and also top five uh, first world countries. That will be better. But for a start, try to probably start with the US first. Once you gain some traffic, then you can start in many other countries. Okay, Amazon FBA considered as drop shipping tool. US considered. FBA is not considered. FBM is. Uh, still need to use WooCommerce. Now, the good thing about using WooCommerce, right, is basically your. You can do a lot of retargeting. You can make your sites a lot more uh, interesting, uh, more your converts a lot more better, and the data are actually yours, not anyone. Yeah. So would you suggest to create a general brand or so create a few general interest pitch? Ah, this is a very good answer. Ah, good, good question. So normally, please, I would say, don't do a general brand. Okay. Let's say if you are selling uh, a pet store, uh, pet store products, okay, suddenly you are selling handphone, mobile phones. Yes. I mean, the audience will get very confused what actually you are trying to sell. Okay, basically, you need to create a brand. If you are selling ladies, take for instance, uh, for this anonymous home or beauty, so you focus on beauty products or home products. Don't try to focus on these two. Unless the products, uh, probably home and beauty comes hand in hand. <coughs> Sometimes there are also some overlapping uh, uh, industries. Yeah. Wow, there's so much questions. Uh, <laughs> okay. 
So those that is uh, need, if needs too in depth uh, explanation, maybe we can skip lah. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, by Boon Pin. If our customer know our supplier, then in the future, uh, will they buy directly from them? When they, when <clears throat> basically when your supplier ship, right? In AliExpress, right, you can actually indicate that do not put any invoices. So, uh, basically, <clears throat> when the product <clears throat> arrives at your customer's uh, home, they wouldn't know the address of the supplier. Yeah. So in, in this case, they don't know where, where is it from. And yeah, basically that's the answer. So after customer place order. Ah, okay, by Ricky again. So after customer place the order in the AliExpress site, do we need to order in AliExpress manually or any plugin to do or uh, auto ordering in AliExpress? Okay, for this, right, uh, if you are using Isuzi, uh, this, more automated. However, take for instance, probably you will encounter suddenly if you are using this supplier, suddenly they increase price, probably from $20 to increase price to $30 or $40, dollars. then you have to change your, your supplier. And in this case, only you have to do the nano AliExpress or RPM base. Because some of, some of the price uh, will fluctuate depending on season also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Those two in, in that one, I think. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, some of them uh, that are asking questions are also coming for your class already. So. Oh, okay. 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 So Melvin, can you outline the pros and cons of normal product dropshipping and POD? Which one do you recommend to start with? I would say for beginners, right, uh, dropshipping uh, product from AliExpress is a lot simpler. Because for print on demand, you need to get uh, designers to design your logo, I'm oh, sorry, your, your, the products. I mean, you need to get a very good designer to design your, the things that you want to sell. Take for instance, uh, basically an icon or some dog, uh, some, some pictures, right? Okay, some images or illustration, I would call it. Uh, then from there, you design your own, unless you are a very good designer yourself, oh, the cost will be a lot higher. Because I, I did my for myself, because I am a designer myself, so what I do, I go to, uh, I go and I go and purchase those kind of vectors, okay, and design it from there. Of course, you need to use Photoshop and uh, Adobe Illustrator. That's a lot more advanced. Uh, even logo, I also design my own. So it's not so recommended to get started fast. Even if you want, if you want to start fast, just start a normal product on uh, dropshipping. Because description is done for you, images is done for you. Probably you just have to change some of the designs. Uh, you can engage on Tiger. They can get it done be, uh, for less than three days. Yeah. Okay, so can we use this e-commerce website as our online store and fulfill using Amazon FBA automatically when orders came in? Okay, for this is a bit advanced, so I have to skip that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, for Elvin, what tips uh, do you have on selecting a brand name? Okay, this is a very good question. So, selecting a brand name, right? It depends on what niche you are trying to sell. Okay, you, you can actually create a brand name that's not related. Uh, I would say just a unique name that's also perfectly fine. Like one of the print on demand store, probably you can create, like take for instance, you can use Zalora kind of a name and just change it from there. Something, something la, or make it very unique. All right. Okay. 
but it has to resonate with your your products and your brand. That's that's the main focus. Yeah. Okay. Let's do a last last question. Okay, last question. Let me select. Okay, probably the last question by an anonymous attendee. You said you create one website per product. Why wouldn't you put several products on the same website? Okay, for a beginner, yes, one product per website is good enough to start. But when, you, when once you advance, I think for instance, what I do, uh, take for instance, if I'm selling a music related uh, niche, okay. So once I sell probably a headphone, uh, probably a earpiece like this, okay, I can continue to sell related headphones related to music uh, gadgets and stuff like that, okay. But what I will not sell is something on my store. Uh, let's say I'm doing music and then I suddenly sell a mouse pad or mouse or probably a mark that, that doesn't resonate with your brand. So normally when you have one product, you should be focusing on selling uh, and focusing on scaling it. Because once you have too many products, I've tried that in the, in the past. My gadget stores have hundreds of products. Uh, it's a nightmare trying to figure out, uh, especially when you, when you have too many suppliers, Okay, and they, they keep changing price. Then you, you have to keep finding the, the perfect product that the customer purchase, okay, versus um, your supplier. So basically, once you go to AliExpress, you see this supplier increase price by $10, you have to find another supplier. And it's really a nightmare trying to source which supplier to actually find. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, okay, my last last one, last one, okay, by Ricky, as you mentioned, we need $20, $30, profit of 71 products. What's your suggestion about the cost of product in AliExpress? Uh, it depends. So normally, between $10 to $20 kind of products, we can easily sell for $40, $50. $20, $30, profit. So if you find, if you found something like a, a hanger, a very interesting hanger that last night I found. One piece you can, the, the cost is about $2, but you should sell as a set, a four piece set, something like that. Probably your four piece set, which your cost is about $10, and you can sell it for $30 to $40. Yeah. And trying to find videos of uh, for your products also. That, that, in that way, when you're trying to scale on Facebook, it's a lot easier. Okay, so. I hope you guys have, uh, uh, have gained some value from my Q&A and also my presentation. Uh, my voice is actually breaking down already. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Melvin, so much for your, for your time. I, I'm sure everyone is, um, have learned a lot from you today.